Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In the previous lecture, we have studied some constituency tests, especially those pertained to uh, non-verbal constituents. In today's lecture, we continue our explanation of the constituency tests and we focus on the verbal constituents. Uh, we have seen before that the subject of the sentence is a constituent. Also, we have seen that all the units that follow the verb are also constituents, like the object, direct or indirect, complements, modifiers. All these can be considered as syntactic constituents. Now, the question is, what about the verbal forms, meaning the modalist auxiliaries and the full verbs? Do they together form a constituent? So in our previous illustrative example, we have this sentence. John will invite his intimate friends after the event. The verbal form consists of the model will and the full verb invite. So can we consider will invite as one single constituent or do they behave as two independent constituents? There are several tests which show that the verb and the model do not form one single constituent. Rather, they should be treated as two separate constituents. In fact, the model seems to be a constituent by itself and the verb together with its object or complement or whatever comes after it is another constituent. This can be shown by the yes-no question test, the pseudo-clefting test, and the coordination test. So we start by the yes-no question test. A yes-no question is usually an interrogative sentence which can be answered by yes, no, or maybe. So apply to the previous example, we derived the grammatical question in A. Will Harry invite, or John, his intimate friends after dark? Okay, since well can be moved alone to the initial position of the sentence, so it should be treated as an independent verbal unit. This observation is supported by further illustrations. So as you can see, will is moved alone to the initial position of the sentence. So this means that it's a constituent by itself. Now, we test other alternatives. Can we say we invite Harry his intimate friends after dark? No, we cannot. So in B, it is not possible to move the model alone with the verb. This clearly shows that will meet is not a syntactic constituent. The same for the structure in C. We cannot say will invite his intimate friends Harry after dark. Okay, C shows that will invite his intimate friends cannot be moved altogether, so it cannot be considered as a constituent. Another test is called coordination test. Coordination is the act of combining words or groups of words into single units or a single unit using the the uh, preposition and or the, co the uh, conjunctive and and then confirming that they still behave exactly like each other in the units okay uh, uh, as the units uh, would be uh, would behave individually the basis of the test is the following statements only constituents can be coordinated non-constituent sequences cannot be coordinated and only constituents of the same syntactic category can be coordinated. So, look at these examples which illustrate these statements. John will anger his father and disturb his mother. Here, we have coordinated two verbal constituents. Anger his father, the verb and its object, and then disturb his mother, the verb and its object. And we have excluded will, which means that will is a constituent and anger his father, disturb his mother are two other constituents. Again, we can 
coordinate just between the verbs alone. So we say, John will quickly shred and burn his report card. So here we have two verbs with the same object. We have coordinated two verbs, shred and burn. This means that in both sentences, the coordinate verbal units are grammatical constituents, even after the exclusion of the model will. Another uh, constituent test is called pseudo clifton It is a process similar to clifton that we have seen with nonverbal constituents. Part of the sentence in this operation, which is the subject and the model auxiliary and the appropriate form of do, are proposed and inserted in the frame. The frame which we can see in front of you. We say what something is. The string of words following the frame, which is okay, uh, eliminated or moved, identifies the verbal unit. So we'll see this on this example. What Harry will do is invite his intimate friends after dark. What Harry will do is. What comes after is, is a verbal constituent. As you can see, will is excluded again it is out the evidence is the following example what harry does is will invite his intimate friends after dark we cannot have will invite his intimate friends after dark as a constituent which is clefted by uh, in, which can be clefted in this sentence or pseudo clefted in this sentence this test again shows that will does not belong to the verbal unit Concluding, pseudo clefting or coordination and the yes no question test show that the model and the verb belong to two different constituents. Now, the key points I would like you to recall and grasp in these two lectures, which means this one and the one before, is that in a grammatical sentence, in any grammatical sentence, there are verbal and nonverbal constituents. Nonverbal constituents can be realized as the noun phrase, the adjective phrase, the adverb phrase, and the preposition phrase. The verbal constituents can be realized as the, the VP or the IP. The IP here is a new category for you. We will see it later on. We'll explain it. It, is, it stands for inflectional phrase, an inflectional phrase. It represents models and auxiliaries. All these constituents can be identified by using at least one of the following constituency tests, substitution, deletion, movement, pseudo clefton, yes, no questions, and coordination tests. There are some final remarks I would like to, uh, to, 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 to make here. The constituency tests do not apply in the same way to all constituents. This is why they should be considered as indications rather than, and, uh, than as incontestable tests. The second remark, although we have shown above that some units are syntactic constituents using various tests, any one test would have been sufficient just one if it can apply so it is sufficient to prove that what we are speaking about is a constituent or not thus if a string of words can be identified as a constituent by one of the constituency tests that is enough and this is what we have shown in the last section about verbal constituents thank you very much and see you in the next lecture about argument structure